Hey, so recently I have not been the most motivated person. In other words, I've been in the dreaded rut. Today I wanted to talk about some things that helped me get out of the dreaded rut zone. So let's go. But first, I need to run 18 miles. Okay, give me a sec. And by the power of editing, so if you're like me, a human, your life probably looks something like, hold up. Okay, so I'm hoping your graph looks similar to mine. We've got this common graph. In the X axis, we've got time. The Y axis, I'm gonna call self-improvement. So as far as the graph goes, if you're not perfect, you're gonna have these little wins and then a rut, a win and a rut, and it is just a constant sequence of these. And then you might have some larger dips in this, and I like to call these cataclysms. And these cataclysm events can be maybe someone in your family dies or you lose a job, something that really impacts your life in a pretty dramatic way. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna focus on the smaller dips, AKA ruts. The one thing I do wanna point out is that if you zoom out, there should be an upward trend on this graph. Yes, you'll have the ruts and the cataclysm events, but overall, it should be going upward for you. If you don't feel like your graph looks like this or you're in one of these cataclysmic events, then it might be worth searching for help. There's definitely a difference between a rut and depression, so just food for thought. All right, so how do we actually pivot from acknowledging our ruts to actually getting out of them? First, let's talk about momentum. You've probably heard sayings like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Or things like, every journey starts with the first step, blah, blah, blah. But when you're down in the dumps or unmotivated, even that small step feels impossible. That's where things like a to-do list come to the rescue. You see, to-do lists don't have to have these complex tasks on them. My, I'm in a rut to-do list looks very different than everything is perfect and all right in the world to-do list. For example, my in the ruts list will have things like make coffee, read for five minutes, make a protein shake, things I know that are simple that will give me the satisfaction of crossing it off the list. After I have successfully completed a few days of these very simple to-do lists, then, then the tasks on them start to gradually get more complicated and complicated until eventually I am in my everything is all right in the world to-do list. Number two, soak up the sun. Get some sun. If you tend to watch or listen to the same type of content that I do, then you know who Father Huberman is. Probably going to the grave saying this, so forgive me if people have heard me say this before, but the single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. I'm going to link his video down below because he will give you a much better explanation as to why being outside in the sun is beneficial. But trust me, it really does work. Get outside, take a small walk break, whatever you can squeeze out throughout your day. But seriously, picture two people stuck in a rut. One of them is locked away in a dark room with zero windows and no light whatsoever. And the other one is outside sitting on a table, listening to the birds chirp, watching the squirrel run in the grass, looking up at the big blue sky. Okay, I might've gotten carried away, but it's a good segue to my next point. Number three, connection. You see, you and I, humans, are social creatures. We require that connection with nature and other human beings. When we are in these ruts, it's easy for us to isolate ourselves, hide away in a dark room, and watch Netflix all day. However, it's in these times that reaching out and connecting with others becomes even more crucial. Sometimes just knowing that you're not alone in how you're feeling can lighten the burden. Talking with other people that might have experienced something similar can give you a different perspective. A fresh set of eyes may see something that you just can't see because you are locked into the problem. So definitely having that side perspective from a trustworthy person can be very beneficial. Moving on, let's tackle the double-edged sword of our era, social media. In today's world, it is 
way too easy to fall into the endless death scroll. Each swipe brings a new wave of curated perfection. But here's the thing, while these reels can be inspiring sometimes, they often don't tell the full story. Behind each perfect post can lie hundreds of moments of doubt, effort, and real life messiness that we just don't see. And this isn't really the best because then you start comparing your life to their life and then you enter the cycle of, oh no, I'm falling behind. Why is this person doing this? What, what? So if you're in a rut, time box yourself to social media or just completely stay away. Number four, failure loop and ownership. So what about when things go wrong? very wrong. It's easy to get trapped in an infinite failure loop and you never make it out of that rut. It feels like every time you're about to get out of that little hole, you fall back down. It's in these moments that we encounter the failure loop. A cycle of setbacks, disappointment, and often confidence destroyer for us. The secret to breaking free from this loop isn't to avoid failure, but it's to embrace it and grow from it. That sounds easy, but let me break it down. Taking ownership of our failures means looking them straight on and asking, why did this happen? What caused this reaction? What can I learn from this? It's about shifting our mindset from seeing these failures as the end of the road and actually using them as a step. So think of a, a staircase and every failure step continue stepping on. But how do we do that? Reflect, like I mentioned before, spend time figuring out what went wrong, but don't dwell on your failure. Use this reflection to extract lessons, but don't beat yourself up over the mistake. Seek feedback. An outside perspective from someone that you trust can bring a different insight to something that you might have missed. Plan your next steps. Armed with new knowledge, Devise a plan to move forward. What will you do differently next time? How can you avoid X situation? Or how can you adjust your strategy to meet your goal? And that's hard, I know. There are some things that are out of our control, but out of the things that you can control, how can you react better? By doing this, you will fail forward, meaning you'll keep going up the little ladder and your graph should look something like this. And that's how we grow as humans. Prevention, recognizing those red flags. So this might be strange, but for me, when my fish tank looks like this, the rhythm in my life is not right. For you, that might be the hamper or the dishes piling up in the sink, the soap dispenser that at this point is just not even soap, it's just water because you haven't taken the three minutes it takes to refill it. Don't judge me, I know you've been there before. By keeping an eye on these red flags, whatever those are for you, you can be proactive and identify when you're starting to slip down into that rut. Maybe you can reassess or change up your current routine. I've noticed that I tend to fall into ruts when I've just been doing the same thing over and over and I feel like I'm not moving forward. So changing up that routine, even if it's just a little, really helps. Hopefully some of these tips can help you get out of a rut if you are in one. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one.